Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host, Brett Murphy, and for today's video, it is going to be another ranking. And I am going to be ranking all 25 Pixar movies. So Disney and Pixar's Turning Red has released this past weekend exclusively on Disney+. Plus, Marking the first release from the animation studio Juggernaut in almost a year. So of course, in typical fashion of this channel, I am here to update my ranking. Before I hop into the actual ranking itself, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my ranking videos. So be sure to check that out, and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Number 25, Cars 2. I really think this movie would have been so much better if they just put all of their focus on the World Grand Prix, as well as the feud between Lightning and Mater, the passing of Doc, and so on. This should have left all that spy stuff out and let it be its own completely original and separate movie at some point in the future. Not to mention putting all of the focus on Mater was such a bad idea. This character always did and always will work better as a side character and a comedic relief. Number 24, The Good Dinosaur. I love how this movie is all about building your confidence and conquering your fears. Learning to forgive and learning acceptance. It really is the same sort of familiar story we have gotten from Pixar multiple times at this point. Our hero gets lost and they need to find their way back home. I really do like the role reversal though, where we explore a world where dinosaurs never went extinct. It was a very unique idea and I thought it was cleverly executed. Number 23, Luca. Well, it's the trademark fish out of water Pixar story, except this time it's actually a fish out of water. They really tried to mix things up and not make it look so realistic. I also really did enjoy the exploration of Italian heritage and the various myths of sea monsters. This movie really is all about breaking down barriers, finding yourself, and going out of your comfort zone. I really do hate to put this movie down so low because I don't think it's bad by any means. I actually quite enjoy it, but it had to end up somewhere. Number 22. Finding Dory. Yes, this movie is kind of exactly the same thing we got the first time around, except just more Dory. What does earn it this spot though is the new characters, the fun and exciting new setting, as well as the surprisingly deep conflict that Dory feels between choosing her real family and the family that she has made for herself. Number 21, Incredibles 2. A sequel we waited a whole 14 years for that both did and didn't disappoint. I really did enjoy the increased focus on Elastigirl, as well as the expansion of this whole superhero universe, and the introduction to a whole new roster of original superheroes. But that big villain reveal was completely obvious from the start, and the villain overall in my mind was just far less memorable. There's still lots of fun to be had in this sequel, but it very much so sits in the shadow of its original. Number 20 turning red. This being the first Pixar movie set in Canada had me excited going in, but thankfully there was really no predetermined bias needed because I loved the movie anyway. From our lovable and quirky main cast of characters, to the positive messages aimed at young women, to the exploration of Canada and the Chinese culture. I really dug all of it. My only real gripe with this movie is that the final act felt a little too over the top and thus out of place. Number 19. Brave. I feel I enjoy this movie more than most seem to. I loved the slapstick comedy elements and this movie is full of them. To me, it all came off quite naturally and I found it to be hilarious. I also really did enjoy the exploration of Scottish heritage and folk tales. Merida was a brilliant lead that really flipped the whole damsel in distress trope on its head. It also had a pretty terrifying villain and a beautiful mother and daughter story at its heart. Number 18. Cars 3. This is very much so a passing of the torch kind of movie. It's all about knowing when you're past your prime, letting go, and finding those next steps in life. This is a big thing with real world athletes especially, and that's why it was very suitable and fitting for this movie, when they still have the heart to go but the body just can't anymore. Of course though, it does still leave plenty of fun and goofy stuff for the kids to enjoy. The last thing that I wanted to mention though is that the promo material for this movie went way harder than it needed to. I mean, leading up to its release, this shit looked like it was going to be dark. Number 17, Toy Story 4. Yeah, I know a lot of people are probably going to be pretty mad about this one. I really do like the messages about moving on and new beginnings and whatnot. 
And this movie is not without its charm and a few good laughs, that's for sure. But I've just never been able to shake the feeling that this movie was so completely unnecessary. Toy Story 3 had the perfect ending. I mean, it is quite literally one of my favorite, if not my favorite movie ending ever. And I really think they should have just left it at that. The animation is still stunning, and I will always accept a new adventure with these characters. But sadly, it comes nowhere near the sheer brilliance of the original three. Number 16, Monsters University. I actually really like this sequel, even if it doesn't come anywhere near the heights of its predecessor. However, it does give us a pretty darn good backstory to Mike and Sully's relationship, some exceptionally well-told teachable moments, and what can I say, I'm a sucker for a good underdog story. I also really did vibe with all of the new characters we got to meet. They were all quirky, weird, and just total outcasts. I really did love the increased focus on them. Number 15. A Bug's Life. The absolute best part about this movie is the dynamic between the colorful cast of characters. Each offers up something entirely different from the other. I've also always really enjoyed how they've taken everything we've come to know about bugs and insects of every kind and twisted it to their advantage and turned it into comedy gold. I mean, it's such a simple premise. It is literally just a bug's life, but they really took that idea and ran with it, giving us a funny and compelling tale set in a creative new world. Number 14, Onward. This movie was really right up my alley from the get-go. I absolutely adore the fantasy genre, so hearing that Pixar was taking on a movie like this got me immediately excited. I really loved those elements in here, and I feel they completely nailed it. But what really got me in the end of this movie is the bond between the two lead brothers. How the loss of their father has affected them, and how despite them being complete polar opposites, they always make up for what the other lacks. As a big brother myself of two younger siblings, this one really hit home. Number 13, Wally. This may quite possibly be the most visually striking Pixar movie to date. To be honest, I really don't remember liking Wally -E all that much as a kid, but as I've grown older, I have grown wiser. While this is certainly meant to be a cautionary tale about pollution, overindulgence, and global warming, it ultimately ends up being a tale about love and finding purpose. Number 12, Soul. This movie really does take a good, long, hard look at life, the human soul, and purpose in a way that is easily digestible for children and can really hit at home for adults. We actually end up with what might be our most sympathetic hero yet. Again, it is another one of those classic Pixar journeys. It's about following your dreams, discovering who you are, and what you're meant for. It handles what could end up being an incredibly dark topic like death, and instead makes it almost hopeful and quite elegant. Number 11, Coco. I adored the exploration of the Mexican culture, in particular Dia de los Muertos, which I probably butchered the pronunciation for, and for that I am incredibly sorry. It also does cover some very difficult and important topics like death, life after death, and just learning to let go. Not to mention the ending of this movie is one of the biggest tearjerkers ever, while the song Remember Me is unforgettable, pun intended. Number 10, Toy Story 3. This is truly where the story should have ended, and I already did a video on that. Although I don't personally believe it's as strong as its two predecessors, I do believe it ended everything on a perfect note, and when I say perfect, I truly mean perfect. That honestly should have been a wrap on the franchise there. I loved all of the new characters we were introduced to, I loved the new setting, and I loved seeing the toys come together for this new adventure. The comedy works well, the stakes are higher than ever, and it really did seem like they originally wanted this to be the ending, and I think it should have been. Number 9. Up. Up is definitely one of Pixar's most outlandish ideas. I mean, it is a house being carried away by thousands of balloons, there are talking dogs, a childhood hero turned menacing villain, a giant colorful weird bird, and the world's luckiest or unluckiest little boy scout. It really shouldn't work. It's super weird, but it does work. And it ends up being one of Pixar's most unique, heartfelt, and memorable ideas. Oh man, that opening? If you were not crying in the theater in the first 10 minutes of this movie, I really do have to question if you have a heart at all. Probably the saddest movie opening ever. Number 8, Inside Out. Pixar really does have an act for giving everything in the known plane of existence emotions, and now they've gone and given emotions 
emotions. Somehow it ends up hitting incredibly hard and hit me in particular even harder. As a kid, I moved between three different elementary schools so I can really understand what Riley's going through. And believe me, it is so hard having to start over that many times and leaving behind everything that you had built. This movie does such a good job at handling emotions, as well as memories and themes of growing up and starting over. Number 7. Cars. An absolute classic that doesn't get anywhere near as much love as it deserves. Between the colorful characters, the idea of giving our cars personalities, while also exploring themes like ego, sympathy, and empathy. I also really do love the overall aesthetic of Radiator Springs. Especially that nighttime drive with the neon lights and life would be sweet playing in the background. Oh, that scene is just one of Pixar's best, in my humble opinion. Something about it just really hits home. The races are exhilarating, and the soundtrack is just so iconic, too. Number 6. Ratatouille The setting might be my favorite part. In fact, it might honestly be my favorite setting of any Pixar movie. It very much so is a dream destination of mine. Aside from that though, this truly has to be one of the wildest, most unique, and quite perplexing ideas that Pixar has ever come up with. I mean seriously, who thinks of this? Nevertheless, it's a classic don't judge a book by its cover kind of story. But it's also very much so a finding yourself kind of story too. Number 5. Toy Story 2 Just like I mentioned in the previous entry with Ratatouille, Toy Story 2 also focuses very heavily on themes of self-discovery, and almost all of our main characters go through this in some form or another. It really does feed into all of the emotions. It's heartbreaking, uplifting, beautiful, and crushing. I mean, Jesse's backstory has to be one of the saddest movie moments in history. Regardless, this movie really did go all in on the bigger and better sequel idea, and it damn well near got there. Number 4. Finding Nemo a father and son bond unlike any other out there. It acts as both a quite literal fish out of water story and a finding your way home journey. It covers a wide range of themes like learning to let go, courage, bravery, understanding, patience, finding your inner strength, and so much more. Exploring the vast and seemingly endless ocean, while our characters bump into all sorts of strange sea creatures, is always a treat with some genuinely beautiful moments and animation. It truly is some of Pixar's best work. Number 3. The Incredibles this is somehow the best Fantastic Four movie we have ever gotten. A perfect blend of comedy, big explosive superhero action, and family bonding. With a memorable villain in a dynamic family team of superheroes, each with their own unique powers and larger than life personalities. Number 2. Monsters Inc. The truest story out there that a real friendship can withstand any test. Despite their differences, Mike and Sully are one of the best dynamic duos in the business. And I don't mean the scare business, I mean the movie business. Randall is among Pixar's best villains, if not their best villain. The world they have crafted here is incredibly complex and layered. It takes the time to explain so many childhood fears in a fun and lighthearted kind of way. It also flips the script and shows us that the monsters are even more scared of us than we ever were of them. A brilliantly told tale top to bottom. Just remember to put that thing back where it came from or so help me. Number 1. Toy Story Somehow, their first ever project is still their best to date. It has always been and will likely always be my favorite animated movie of all time. It's actually one of my favorite movies of all time in general. I mean, I don't know if I've ever watched a movie more than I have watched Toy Story. I also really don't think there's ever been a movie out there that has affected me more than Toy Story. This movie has gotten me through a lot of tough times and has really helped me in growing up. Mostly because it is a movie about growth friendship, dealing with change, and ultimately about home. That, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, is exactly why I still adore it and believe it is the best that Pixar has to offer. So, that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my ranking. While you're at it, feel free to let me know how you would rank every single one of the Pixar movies, and feel free to suggest what ranking you'd like to see me cover next. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads and as always stay safe thank you so much for watching and that's a wrap
Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.